Hello, sparklers. Welcome back to Ignite Your Spark with me, your host, Kim Duff Selby. Thank you for joining me each and every week for transformation, for information, for self-healing, because that seems to be the direction the universe wants me to go to help you all heal and transform and reach your highest potential. And today I have with me someone who does just that. His name is Marty Woodkey. And Marty started the Woodkey Infinite Potential Institute in Santa Barbara. And he works in the field of neurofeedback therapy. And he has a lot of experience in this arena. And he was the first to utilize neurofeedback as an inpatient treatment method for drug addictions, anxiety disorders, depression, and PTSD. So imagine what it can do for you out there who perhaps may be suffering from coming out of COVID with loneliness or just feeling you're not reaching your full potential or you have trouble sleeping or you have this or that. So let's get into it and Thank you. Thank you, Marty, for joining me and welcome. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Thanks. I'm going to ask you what I ask all my guests, and that is, Marty, before we begin your story, mm -hmm. how do you ignite your spark? Um, I have a, a daily meditation practice that I've been doing for 40 years. Uh, I, I lived at a, a yoga retreat ashram meditation center and uh, started getting up at three o'clock in the morning and doing my two hours of sadhana. And I can tell that that is that is where I get my spark. That's where I get my juice. That's where I get my um, my mission orientation. Uh, that, that's that's where I get it from. Of course, I exercise. I love nature. All those things contribute. But you know, going inside and finding those. Um, those inner resources is really what drives me. Do you still get up at 3 a.m. to meditate or do it a little later now? I, a little, maybe 3.30. And then you're up for the rest of the day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to bed early, though. Yeah, so, uh, like 6? No, not that early. Usually <laughs> between 8 and 9. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, the, but again, I, you know, I start, it became such a habit when I started doing this 40 years ago that it has stuck with me. I, I you know, I'm, I'm excited when uh, three o'clock rolls around and then I can get up and do my meditation. Mm. So. And how long do you meditate? A couple hours usually. Wow. Yeah. So it's, you have a very calm demeanor and that is why I know I do not have a very calm demeanor, but I meditate. And can you imagine without meditation? <laughs> <laughs> And I don't drink coffee, so I there's no way. Yeah. But I I have interviewed over a hundred people, whatever, and m many people have said meditation is the key to igniting their spark. It is. Hmm. I wouldn't say it ignites my spark so much as it grounds me for the day in order to lead me to those activities which truly ignite my spark. Mm -hmm. okay. So, but I am a lover of nature and exercise. And talking to people ignites my spark, you know, learning. And you're going to teach us all about neurofeedback today. <laughs> well, maybe not all, but I, I don't want to spend too much time on your backstory, but I do think it is interesting how you got into, just briefly, how you got into neurofeedback and the therapy. And I know how you began as starting in the chiropractic field did you actually finish becoming a chiropractor no no i i switched gears about halfway through chiropractic university and that's when i went to live at the uh, meditation retreat center and um within short order started working at the psychiatric hospital oh. wow so you started working at a psychiatric hospital i realized because i did a little research on you as well because you wanted to help people, because you saw the power of meditation and the transformation. Yeah, and I, I had a, you know, prior to that in my adolescence, uh, I'd been a severely addicted to drugs mm. and went through uh, seven treatment programs and overdoses and all that uh, horrible stuff that addicts go through. And I had a spiritual awakening when I was 21 years old in 1978. And that, um, 
made it very clear for me that I had a mission. I was here for a reason, and I and I uh, it took me a little while exploring to find out exactly how to apply that. But my goal was to assist other people in that self healing process that I underwent, and um, and that spent a few years. But I you know I I, I found it in short order finally. <laughs> it's been a few years. We're the same age. <laughs> yeah, okay, <laughs> few years. <laughs> Just a couple, two, three. <laughs> So you began, you you had a spiritual awakening, as so many people do who feel they are called to do be of service in the world. Mm -hmm. And getting leading meditation is what how you started that. And then what how did you get into neurofeedback? Okay, good question. Um so I I started teaching meditation at this institute as a volunteer, mm. just to you know, make it available to the patients there. And what happened was um, the medical director, of course, he did his rounds every night and he started getting fairly phenomenal reports from people that they were, you know, their chronic pain was easing, their cravings were going away, their anxiety, etc. So he asked me, he said, would you uh, want to join our staff? <clears throat> but I realized this was, you know, this was 1983. I realized... Um, that I needed to bring more scientific validity and credibility if, you know, I was going to implement neurofeedback in the uh, uh, meditation. So I did uh, quite a bit of research on what happens in the meditator's body and more importantly in their brain as they meditate. And uh, it has to do with brain waves changing, st brain structurally changing, and then I realized there was this thing called biofeedback, you know, brainwave biofeedback. And uh, and there was some research with meditators. So I felt like that was the key. I, it was intuitive, too. It wasn't that I studied something. I just I just knew it. And my spiritual mentor, my guru, my teacher said, go for it. This is very important. So um, so I the hospital bought me the equipment. And I started treating all the all the patients, 35 patients twice a day. And the results were profound. We only had them for 30 days. But, you know, not only were they learning how to be calmer, but they're, again, their cravings, their anxieties, their post-traumatic stress disorder, head injury, all these things started to respond to the therapy. So I, we knew we had something at that point. So I've heard of, I had heard of biofeedback as well, but... Can you explain how bio, do you marry the two bio and neurotherapy? Yeah. Can you explain that to people who may be, okay, I know what meditation is, get that, may not be able to do it, but I get it. But isn't there equipment involved? Is this something you need to see someone in person and they hook up little goober things to you? Uh, if you can give me the Reader's Digest version sure. of what bio neurofeedback okay. is. Um, so biofeedback, neurofeedback is actually a form of biofeedback. Okay. Biofeedback, we can use muscle tension, skin temperature, breathing, heart rate. You know, those are all physiologic mechanisms that we can give feedback about and a person can learn to alter them. Neurofeedback, we go directly to the source of everything, the governor, the brain. And the technology is very sophisticated and advanced now. So we actually use, I don't have one here, but we we'll use these caps and mm -hmm. we, we, we do whole brain neurofeedback. So just like other uh, measures in your body, like your blood sugar, your um, uh, liver enzymes, et cetera, et cetera, just, just as all those measures have normal or ideal uh, uh, limits, um so does the brain so we've measured what we use is actually six thousand metrics that we look at and we and we see if there is a problem anywhere and if by a problem is this outside of the norm and if it is it usually correlates with a, with a specific problem from everything from anxiety to trauma to even a lot of people post concussion um anxiety disorders, autoimmune disorders. So we can actually see that in the brain and measure it. And then to really make it exciting, the computer, again, is very sophisticated. It will target those areas to teach the person, not, it doesn't go in there and do anything. 
but targets those areas so we can teach the individual how to alter things there. And when that person learns how to alter things there, symptoms ameliorate. And this is, you know, look, the, the military caught on to this. So they have two uh, army rehabilitation bases in Florida where they're using this extensively with the guys who have uh, head injury or post-traumatic stress disorder. Lots of uh, athletes are using this now. An entire mm -hmm. soccer team in Italy used it and then they won the World Cup years ago. So it's, it's getting out there more and more. Um, but uh, you know, our approach still focuses on um, the individual with clinical issues. Okay. So this is something clearly you cannot do over Zoom. This is something that has to be done in person. Yeah, there are, there are um, home units now, and I am actually working on creating one. But you really need a skilled clinician for this who knows what that means in your brain and who has a lot of experience in how to assist you to make those changes. And it's not, it's not a magic bullet. And if anybody says that, run away. But it does help everything else work better. For instance, you know, we do, is the book called The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. Excellent book. And, um, you know, it talks about that the body keeps the score of all the traumas, all the things that have happened to it. So oftentimes we have clients who we know need some kind of body work, whether it's somatic healing or uh, whatever. So, so neurofeedback rounds out many people's treatment programs. And when you said, I understand how you might need a skilled person because you are looking at a picture of the brain. Yeah. I wouldn't know. I have seen pictures. I've been to talks and I've seen medical doctors in combination with meditation and they show how certain parts of the brain change. Right. The telomeres. What are the telomeres? Yeah, that's for aging. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I need to get those telomeres reversed. <laughs> but but it, I've re heard that also the meditation can reverse and change yes. that. So it if the normal person is looking at a picture of your brain, I would have no idea what that is. So when you are looking at it, you say that through the computer, you can determine what the issues are. Yeah, the tech, the technology is very advanced. The, what used to take us, you know, hours and hours to do now, the computer can do in seconds. It can pinpoint those areas of the brain associated with, let's say, depression, uh -huh. trauma, anxiety, you know, all the way down the line to dyslexia, to to sleeplessness, and it and it identifies those areas. And then, if the person says yes, that's my problem, then we can train that. And when I say train, it's just operant conditioning. It's so simple. The computer uh, gives a positive reward when the person begins to shift that activity, and you have to do it over and over again. Obviously, these these neural networks however long they've been established for, you know, sometimes they're pretty stubborn as any psychologist out there can tell you, but we we can help that person's brain move out of these destructive or negative patterns in a relatively short period of time, maybe 10, 20 sessions. So for, for most issues, you need to go in person. But as I said, there are home systems like Muse is one out there. Um, it's not an advanced neurofeedback system, but you know, a lot of people like it. Um, and as I said, there's more coming out down the road. So can you explain a little bit, just if you have someone who comes to you for, I don't know, choose something, sleeplessness, and you can tell in the brain through the computer, and then you confirm that with them. In sessions, what what kind of things do you do? Do you, is it just explain how a session works? I yeah. Guess. It, so uh, the 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 person uh, will wear a cap, an EEG cap. It has nineteen electrodes on it. Measures the brain in real time, and then the pro the computer is programmed to reward that person's brain when it begins to shift the patterns. Now, how, again, the technology is advanced now. It's very simple. We use uh, movies, documentaries like Netflix. Planet Earth, oh, anything really that's suitable. It's not over emotional. And if the person's brain is doing the right thing, it'll be full brightness. Huh. Okay. And then if it's not, it dims. 
So it's this intermittent brightening and dimming. And and most people say, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. What? And then sure enough, after a couple of sessions, they're sleeping because their brain orients to those specific moments when the screen is bright. And when that's happening, it means those those pathways in the brain are shifting or optimizing. So you are, just, I'm sorry, yeah. you are literally shifting by having them watch something? Yeah, and it? remember, the, the watching is the feedback. If their brain's doing the right thing, the picture is full brightness. Oh, wow. If it's not, it dims. We used to just have a great big dot in the screen. Yeah. <laughs> Old technology. And if your brain was doing the right thing, it turned green. If it wasn't, it turned red. Um, and then we got fancy. We got all kinds of games, but we found that the discrete uh, videos work the best. And, you know, we get kids in here. We have them watch, uh, you know, uh, kids videos that they like, and they do, they do excellent. We have autistic kids who respond very well. So um, it's and it's just it's feedback. It's a, it's feedback and training. It's not, you know, it's really not a treatment. Technically, it's a training process. And and really, there's no homework for the trainee. No, no. You yeah. know, I have a, a because I have an eclectic background. Um, I look at everything: nutrition, uh, uh, trauma, childhood, et cetera, et cetera. And you know, we may refer people out if we feel like they need to work on something outside of here uh, or if they uh, you know if, if we we see that there are nutritional issues we'll we may make suggestions and work on that as well but other than that no there's no homework you know um, uh, except of course I want everybody to meditate but not everybody's going to do that you can't convince people to meditate unless they're ready to do it exactly yeah. do you still teach meditation to people yeah yep yeah, yeah, yeah i've been that, that's what i've been doing the longest uh we have a, a big office here almost three thousand square feet and uh there's a great big room in the back here that is uh, our meditation room uh and we can you know fit 20 30 people in there and we hold meditations every tuesday evening from six to seven but I'm in the uh, Kriya Yoga meditation tradition. That's what I was born and raised in. And um, so I teach that type of meditation. What is it again? That Kriya Yoga. Kriya Yoga. Kriya Yoga. Do you remember uh, Paramhansa Yogananda wrote Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Auto <laughs> yeah. That, that I have what, it. Yeah, that was, that, that was the system he brought to the United States. Okay. And okay. my mentor was a monk with him the last few years of his life. Ah, are you familiar with the Ananda Center up here? Oh yeah, Kriyananda. He Kriyananda was a brother, disciple of my guru, my teacher. Right. Interesting. Do you do those online? I'm just you. My audience is worldwide. Uh, yeah, yes, so I, I was. I was doing long two-hour meditations on Saturdays with people from around the world, and those were fun. But uh, we've kind of backed off for a while. We'll start doing those again, though. If you were trying to I like to leave my listeners with a little kind of something if you were trying to explain to someone the benefit two-part question the benefits of meditation other than reversing aging and all the great stuff if there's an elevator pitch that you could tell <laughs> us the benefit of meditation that's question one and then for those who feel they can't meditate do you have you know in quotes do you have a suggestion as to how they might begin? So part one, why and the benefits. Part two, a quickie little how. Okay. Um, meditation is self-directed neuroplasticity. Mm -hmm. So what when you're meditating, you are learning, you know, brain is plastic. Now we, we this old idea that it couldn't change has been obliterated. The brain can change and through meditation. Uh, you can access anything within yourself and you can change anything and it will change, you know, with, with, uh, with, pro with practice. Um, but I do get people who can't meditate yet. I, I worked with a lot of parolees and prisoners and forget it. You know, they close their eyes and all their uh, guilt and shame, all that comes up. So those people we put outside say, get outside, do moving meditation, walk around. 
you know, dig, dig that, plant those trees, make that your meditation. So people who, who, who really have a struggle when they sit and close their eyes and try to quiet themselves, you know, we, we have them do some kind of active form of meditation or moving meditation. But I've never met anybody who eventually couldn't get into the sitting meditation. It's it's a practice. It takes time. The brain doesn't want to sit there and, you know, not think about anything. Are you kidding me? The brain wants to, as soon as we close our eyes, we're all over the place. So um, so I think that's that's the key. Moving meditation. Nature is a wonderful meditation. So, you know, you just find what what makes you feel good and use that. Yeah. And what I want to say there is to anybody who's listening, because I have interviewed a lot of people and a lot of people in the holistic space and in the healing space and meditation is really key, but I don't think that I can drum it into people's heads enough that how important it is. If there is one reason to do it, because I am of a certain age, it's that neuroplasticity. You are uh, my big thing is you're never too old. You're never too old to wear red lipstick. You're never too old to learn a new skill. You're never too old. And why wouldn't you want to reverse the aging? Your brain can change. And we're hearing it from someone who's been in the neurofeedback industry for over 30 years. And you know this is a fact. And you look 20. So there you go. You know, you can tell you've been meditating for a long time. But to me, that is why wouldn't you want to do it? And I get really annoyed by people who say, well, I just can't shut it off. Well, believe me, neither can I. I know it's a lot easier to scroll and Netflix and chill than it is to think by yourself. But it is so important. And I love how you said, get out in nature, do a moving meditation. I'm not a big fan of cleaning. I do it because I have to. But sometimes even cleaning can it's any repetitive motion can be a a meditation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's taken me years to figure that out, too. (laughs) (laughs) And what was my other question? Oh, how? Well, you said it already. You did. You said both. Because neuroplasticity, we want to change our brains. I mean, unless you're a perfect person, we all have something that we can improve upon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Even uh, Neil Neil deGrasse Tyson, I saw him do an interview a day or two ago. And he was making predictions. One prediction was that because of our discoveries in neuroscience about the brain, he's predicting by 2050, um, mental health will be in the past. We won't need psychiatrists and psychologists anymore (laughs) or the medications. Pretty interesting to hear him say that. That is interesting. Do you think that? I don't think it will ever go away completely. I hope the medication does, but people may transition to to this form of therapy. Instead of traditional talk therapy, there will be meditation therapy, or perhaps there will be neurotherapy as more accessible because I'm sure it's not inexpensive and it's not something that necessarily your healthcare provider will be covering for you. Yeah, yeah. So it has I think to be, there will be something, yeah. Yes, it has to be able to be mainstreamed so that more people can benefit from this. It has to be more accessible. And to my mind, that's what comes to mind when you say by 2015, when he says that, 2050, that I believe what you're saying is true, but I also believe that people who th- hear that and go, oh, but but that's that's my field. How come my field? Yeah, it's just gonna morph and change it's and gonna morph exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. 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 Anything oh you've written a book too. Does uh what's the name of that book? It's called The Brain Sutras, uh, keys to the um uh keys to consciousness to the revealed consciousness. That's a that's a heavy duty book that that was written uh, more for my students but uh you know it's on amazon and i get plenty of nice comments from people buying it all over the world but um it, it's pretty intense and it's in the process of being re-edited now just so you know because uh we had it edited but found some major mistakes in it but it's going to be re-edited but you can still get it still makes sense <laughs> <laughs> well, I do. What I want to read, I liked this quote on your website from Deepak Chopra because we all love Deepak, right? Yeah. Marty is on the cutting edge of the movement to utilize technology to amplify the self healing process. So it is your belief that we can heal our own bodies. Absolutely. Yeah. 
And many of my guests have that same theory and everybody approaches it in a different way. There's biofeedback, there's neurotherapy, there's also meditation and there are there's energy work. There's a lot of different ways to go about it. And the way you are doing it is going to speak to many people who really love that scientific mm. background, that scientific, okay, yeah, this is proven. Okay, I like it. I can go with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, before we close, is there anything else you would like to share with my listeners? Um. Well, if, if they're interested, you know, you just Google neurofeedback in my area and see who comes up. Uh, not all neurofeedback is the same. Mm. I have to give that caveat. Uh, there's many different types out there. So sometimes it can be difficult to find something that really works. But neurofeedback has gone exponential the past few years. So they are practitioners within 100 miles of everybody, you know, so. Do you have people that you refer others to across the country? Uh, no, in, in Europe I do, uh, and I have a couple in um, New York City, but uh, I don't, uh, I've learned, number one, that, um, you know, unless I can really investigate somebody, I don't want to, uh, you know, and, and, and clarify things, I don't want to uh, make referrals if I don't know them. So I let people, you know, just if they find somebody to let me know and I'll check them out for them. Okay. Oh, that's good to know. I will yeah. put all of your contact information okay. uh, in the link in the bio, but also do you want to just share how to reach you verbally in case someone? Um, yeah, we have a website and it's a uh, what key, uh, our last name, W-U-T-T-K-E-I-P-I.com. And um, yeah, it's the best way to contact us is through the website. The email is info, I-N-F-O at whatkeyipi.com okay well i'll put it all below when people are looking at it on youtube or listening to it on the podcast okay great uh thank you so much for your time marty thank you kim i really appreciate it i really appreciate it you and to all my listeners thank you so much for tuning in i hope that perhaps you will ignite your spark by going inside and meditating and changing up those brainwaves because you're never too old to shine on.